Hey YouTube, how's it going? Kevin Clear here with a knife video. Today I've got a very budget friendly blade for you. This is the Gonzo G720. It is obviously, as you can see, the profile here based on the Lion Steel SR1. It is quite a bit different, okay? And and really, I, I wouldn't do a comparison between the two because it wouldn't make any sense, okay? These two, um, they're not in the same ballpark in terms of price, in terms of materials, in terms of construction. Uh, you know, there's no one out there who says, hey, I'm about to buy a Lion Steel SR1, but then I saw the, the Gonzo, okay, and, and vice versa. No one's looking at a Gonzo and then say, yeah, you know, maybe I'll, you know, instead of under $20, I'll spend over $200. You know, those, they're, they're not really playing on the same field, okay. But having said that, for a budget-minded person who's looking for a, a very budget-friendly folder that is large, okay, it's, it's quite hefty, this knife. Uh, this is not a bad option. Okay, so in this video, what we're going to focus on is not so much uh, sort of the politics or philosophy or morality of Gonzo. Uh, I will say this, I don't have take an issue with Gonzo too much because they tell you what you're getting. Okay, I would be more, um, I would find it more problematic if they were like lying and saying, hey, this is a whatever. Okay, uh, so if you're on AliExpress, you can find a bunch of knives. There's Shirogorovs, there's Spydercos, there's Striders. Of course, all fake, okay? So those I do take an issue with, and I just don't buy them. All right, so let's move on. Uh, for our purposes, uh, very budget-friendly blade. Size and weight on this is going to be probably a consideration for most people. Uh, it is eight and a quarter inches, so it's not too, too long. Uh, it is you know, three and a half inch blade, four and three quarter inch handle, fairly standard numbers for, you know, a typical ADC blade. However, it's quite thick. Okay, it's more than half an inch thick. It's quite thick in this dimension as well. So it takes up a fair bit of pocket space, you know, almost two inches. And this weighs 7.1 ounces. So it's pretty heavy, all right? Now, having said all of that, I will say, I have other knives that are seven ounces, and this is a little thinner than they tend to be. So it actually carries a little nicer than say a 0200 or a Benchmade Atomist or something like that uh, because of the thinner profile. It's not quite as much of a brick in your pocket, but it still is fairly hefty, all right? Um, the, uh, the pocket clip, by the way, since we're kind of talking about carry, is quite a bit different from a Lion Steel. Let me give you a couple of quick size comparisons while we've got this. Uh, here's a Cold Steel uh, Code 4. And the reason I bring this in is because I would say it is totally possible that someone is looking for sort of a harder use knife and they may look at something like this. And, and this would probably serve that if you're looking for a knife that you're going to really beat on and maybe even destroy. Uh, yeah, it's a lot easier to destroy a $16 knife than it is to destroy uh, a $200 knife. I do have one line steel here. Uh, that is the... TM1, and you can see how they compare there. You can see the Gonzo is a little bit bigger, and the TM1 is very, very close in size to the SR1. So the reason I showed you that is so that you could see uh, that the, the Gonzo is not quite the same size either uh, as, as an SR1. Okay, so that's those are some size comparisons. Obviously, there are like tons of these Gonzos modeled after all kinds of different blades, mostly Benchmades. Uh, and so obviously if you're looking at this, you've probably familiarized yourself with that whole lineup and there may be something else there. I don't have a bunch of them, so uh, I'll leave you to your Googling to find all the different Gonzo models that are out there. All right, uh, so blade on this is a very wide drop point blade. The belly, because of the width and because of the blade design, is quite abrupt. You know, it's it's not a gentle slope, it's very, very steep, okay, to where you're almost coming straight up here at the end. It's not a really sharp point. Because of that, this could have uses for someone who, you know, maybe you're uh, an emergency service and you may have to cut a seat belt or cut clothing or something where you don't want a really sharp point that could stab or could injure your uh, the person you're treating. Okay, you wanna stay away from that. Uh, this drop point is more um, is a more of a drop than the original SR1. So it's not just a, a copy. Uh, the blade stock is thinner. The steel is obviously different. And the edge geometry is also quite a bit thinner 
than, than that. And, then, and what I will say about this blade and about the overall design of it is it actually works really, really well. It's very thin edge geometry, which means you can get a very nice sharp edge on this. The angle is pretty much right for a sharp maker, which is nice since that's something a lot of us have and use to sharpen our knives. Uh, the high flat grind basically acts like a full flat grind, okay? It's, it's like, look how much flat you have here, okay? So this little bit is not really coming into play when you're cutting on anything. Uh, essentially, this is such a high flat grind that it's going to act like a full flat grind. And it's a fairly thin high flat grind because the blade stock here is not as thick as uh, an actual lion steel. Okay, so that's the blade. Oh, the 420C uh, steel is a very good steel. I have used this to the point of getting it dull and resharpened it and not a big issue, it sharpens up pretty easily. It holds an edge better than, you know, a lot of similar materials, okay? So, you know, if you're used to budget blades, you know, if you're used to your OS8 and your 14C28N, I mean, no, no, I'm sorry, strike that last one. If you're used to your OS8 and your 8CR13, that's where the, the 13 came from, uh, if you're used to ATR 13, if you're used to OS 8, you'll, the, you're going to get similar and maybe just slightly better performance out of 440C. Okay, so certainly possible for an EDC steel, especially in a blade of this price point. Let's go on to the lock. The lock is Gonzo's, you know, copy of the Axis lock. It is not as good as the Axis lock. It is not as fast. It's not as easy to deploy. Uh, it doesn't give you the same kind of detent. All right, so it essentially the it functions the same way in terms of you know a bar slides in behind the blade and that's what keeps the blade locked open, but that's pretty well where the similarities end. It's not as comfortable, it's not as smooth, it's not as fast, nothing like that. Okay, so don't think by the way that you know you're getting anything even remotely close to the quality of a bench made in this lock. The lock works fine you're likely not gonna be able to actuate it one-handed. I always have to use two fingers like this. And I've demonstrated that on a bunch of these sort of fake access locks, okay? They always have that issue, or at least all the ones that I've ever seen have that issue. Um, I would like to hear, if you're watching this, comment below, if you've got an H and K that has an access lock, and there are quite a few of them, uh, I would like to know if those H and Ks compare favorably or not so favorably to uh, the Benchmade. Anyway, moving on, that's, that's lockup. It is very solid. Uh, but it's a little tough to actuate. You do need two fingers and you gotta pinch that, uh, that bar a little bit because it's somewhat recessed into the G10, okay? Now, the handle is extremely comfortable. Very, very ergonomic handle. Uh, it's large enough and it's grippy enough that you know this is a knife you can really get some hard work done with. Uh, and so that I definitely appreciate. The handle is very comfortable. And, and these cut-ins on the blade, or I mean on the handle, are extremely grippy. They really do a great job of giving you a lot of texture and a lot of good, uh, good blade grip on that blade. All right, it's also G10, so it's nice and tough. The handle, the construction is, of course, stainless steel liners. They're not milled out in any way. It is Torx bit construction. And the pocket clip is, attached with this sort of glass breaker on the back. So this would need a special tool to, to remove it. So if you wanna switch this pocket clip from left side to right side carry, it's possible, but you'll need a specialized tool. All right, uh, let's see if there's anything else that I really think you need to know about that. I think we've pretty well covered all of the details. So that's my take on the Gonzo 720. I hope you enjoyed the video and we will talk to you soon.